Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about obedience, and we've already seen a very basic outline of what obedience is. However, there's also a hierarchy of obedience. Now, a hierarchy is pretty simple to understand. We've got people on the bottom, people in the middle, and people on the top. Everybody has to obey the people above them. The middle people have to obey the top people, and the bottom people have to obey both the middle and the top people. In the ideal situation, that's all that we need to say about the hierarchy, but people with two or more authority figures above them need to ask another question. What happens when the orders given by the middle people and the ones given by the top people are in contradiction? The Bible offers a simple, clean-cut solution to this problem. But Peter and the apostles answering said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Acts 5.29 In the case where two authorities conflict, the higher authority is the one that should be obeyed. The apostles showed that by obeying the higher authority, God, over the lower authority, men. Indeed, they seemed to think that this was perfectly obvious and should be understood by everyone. But Peter and John answering said to them, If it be just in the sight of God to hear you rather than God, judge ye. Acts 4.19 This phrase was spoken to the Pharisees. In other words, they really ought to have understood that already. Now, the last thing we need to know about the hierarchy of obedience is this. What is it? Where are we on that hierarchy, and who's above us? To start with, every person is a citizen of a nation and has an obligation to obey the law where they live. So that's the first step of the hierarchy. Citizens in the bottom position and the government above them. However, even government should be obedient when it comes to God and the church that he established. The hierarchy within the church is then factored into the hierarchy of obedience, and we're left with a longer list. Here's the list. Citizens, rulers, church authorities, the Pope. However, even the church only has authority because it's given to the church by the Holy Spirit, and because it was founded by Jesus, so the hierarchy of obedience is now citizens, rulers, church authorities, the Pope, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. You might think that was the complete hierarchy, but according to the Bible, even Jesus is obedient. He humbled himself, becoming obedient unto death even to the death of the cross. Philippians 2.8 Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. John 7.16 There are also certain rare instances in which a messenger of God comes from heaven, demonstrating it with miraculous proof, like the visions at Fatima or the appearance of the archangel Gabriel to Mary. They would be below Jesus, but above all human beings, so the final version of the hierarchy is this. Citizens, rulers, church authorities, the Pope, heavenly messengers of God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, God the Father. Whenever someone rejects the correct authority and commands something that goes against that authority, we no longer have any obligation to follow that command. Indeed, such people are described by the Bible as being in a whole lot of trouble. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach a gospel to you besides that which we have preached to you, let him be anathema. Galatians 1.8 Next time, what's a deficiency of obedience? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.